Alright, so water. Okay, so another informational video because everybody liked the last one, so I was like, you know what? Why not make more? Now, I did record other ones and I plan to upload those at some point. It's me playing from behind and stuff, but I kind of want to do something fresh because it was in the moment. So, going GP into gang and, uh, oh, GP into gangplank. Gangplank into jacks. Now, this matchup has always been the same, except last season, with Spear of Shoujin being introduced into the game, it was significantly harder to match Jax once he had that Shoujin second or third item. Now, this season, it's back to how it used to be. Gangplank dominating, and it being a skill-based matchup in that uh, second to th two to three items, two to four items, whereas before, Shoujin, Jax just ran at you in 1v9. Looking at their team... I see nothing that's really a threat to me. At least I can cocoon, or I can orange her cocoon. Oriana, her ult is going to be the only thing that can catch me. Shen, I can orange. Caitlyn is probably the only problem. So, when you're playing Gangplank, you should always be thinking of a game plan. And my game plan right now is, if I can win my lane, and I can angle my barrels well, not in front of me, but to the left of me, so that Caitlyn can auto them, then I'll be able to win this game through carry potential, pure carry potential. Now, the MMR of this game is D1 Masters, so I'm not playing against, you know, Bronzy's Golden, whoever it may be. So they at least know how to use their buttons properly. Into Jax, you can go Barrel Start or Q Start. I'm probably going to go Q Start because he took Resolve. Well, it looks like he didn't have Bone Plating. Okay, walk up. What I like to do versus Jax is whenever he uses that counter strike, when you know he's guaranteed to land a stun off, you should walk towards him so that when you, the stun runs out, you can actually chase him. A lot of GPs try to run away because they're like, ah, man, he's going to stun me, but maybe I can avoid it. No. Embrace the stun and go for the trade after. Think ahead. Right now, I'm slow building a wave in case Elise wants to level 3 gank me or level 2 gank me, whatever it may be. So I'm playing for that at the moment. Now, I can still easily die to a level 2 Elise gank. Only because I don't really have much defense. And I'm going to try and read Jax's movement to tell if I'm going to get ganked or not this game. At the moment, everything's chill and he's playing. Ooh. That had potential for me to hit the barrel there. I was a bit slow on my reaction time, though. I didn't expect him to actually go for that CS. Now, with Jax, when he queues onto something, it's... It's easy to see the prediction, so now that I know he did that once, I'm probably never not going to mess up on that again. Hopefully. Just going to mute Geronimo real quick. And carry on with my day. <gasps> nice. So now is my chance to poke him. While he's under this tower, right here. If he wastes his Counter-Strike, then I have the advantage. Hit my barrels for the Grass proc. I walk up. He feels pressured. He uses his Counter-Strike. I'm patient. And I wait it out. So what did I do there? I built up a wave and I slow-poked him. So that no matter what he did, he would still end up taking a lot of damage there. I don't want to face check that bush because Elise could be there. Now, see how the wave crashed under his tower? Not only did I kill him and he burns his flash, he burns his TP. But more importantly, wave control. Top lane is all about wave control. And because the wave was going in my favor, that means I can set a freeze right now. Now, I'm not going to TP to this wave because Elise could easily gank me and I'll die. And then I fall even more behind because he gets this XP wave and he gets kill credit on me. So I'm just going to TP here and hold the wave with just myself, just my body. Just my willpower. Now, if he's smart, he'll try to stop it like that. But it's not even a big deal. I didn't even need a flash there. I didn't expect that. <gasps> I didn't expect that second tower shot to hit him there, but I'm glad it did. My auto would have killed him otherwise. So I was just taking the precaution to make sure I killed him there. Wave's in a fine spot, but I'd rather push him back at the moment. More than anything else. So he felt pressured. Why? Because the wave was pushing back into me. He didn't want me to set a freeze. So that doesn't happen if I just push the wave back into him. 
But because I pressured him, and he f he felt like, ah, if, if this is frozen, I'm fucked, especially since GPS Sheen, he went for a desperate play. Desperate play did not work, and now he's even more behind than he was before. Nice. So, he actually would have gone away, but I did something there that I emphasize in my videos beforehand, which is going for the sheen proc. As you can see there, I placed my barrel not for the damage, but for the sheen proc. Had I autoed him normally, my passive would not have killed him there. But because I I used a sheen-empowered auto attack, I was actually able to get that kill with my passive, with the last proc of my passive. So although it was pretty close on me getting that kill, it was all due to my sheen proc. I didn't freak out, I just waited on that sheen to come up, waited for my auto attack, walked up to him, and autoed him. It's things like that, those tiny little things can make the difference between you getting that kill. And because I got that kill, I get 300 gold, which is essentially, I want to say 500 gold. Because he misses out on wave and experience. And it's hard to put a limit on that, but when you're this far behind and you're losing out on more levels, the gold deficit is insane. But And also notice, because the wave was pushed under his tower, what's going to happen to the wave is going to push right back into me. Meaning that I can freeze the wave again, or do as I please. And he's going to try and break it again, maybe. But he's so weak right now that if he does that, he's just going to end up falling more behind. Like, I'm not scared to tank him in this entire wave, because I just know I kill him. Okay, well shit, if I hit that barrel, I killed him. <laughs> Either way, I have a good freeze going. And he can't contest it whatsoever. Now, if you're in the opposite side of... Oh! Oh. Okay, Jax. Okay. Wait on my Q, don't take chance with his auto attack. Make sure I place a control ward in case he has a warded. And kill him from there. Almost got a little bit crazy there, but we still managed to hold on. That's how I'm going to leave the wave. He's going to come back anyways and push it, but it's not a big deal for me because I'm going to buy my boots here, I'm going to buy cloth armor, and then a control ward. Actually, I'll go Dagger, because he seems to be getting the timing of my barrels somewhat correct. So I'm going to correct that by getting a Dagger. So look at this. With only wave management, I've secured myself two, I think three kills actually. With, yeah, three kills with purely wave management. Nothing too crazy in my mechanics, mostly for the first blood. Everything else besides that has been pure wave management. Through controlling your wave management, this could be working for any single matchup that you're up against. Nice. Kaelin flashes away. I didn't get an assist on it because it was a bit late on my ulti. She flashed it. Now, I know this wave's going to eventually slow push back, but I don't care that it's going to slow push back because I want him to panic like that. I know he's feeling desperate. This, that, is the play of a broken man. Oh, let me unmute him. I think he's untilted now. <laughs> Why do you end? To record. I want to record this video. I was just feeling it. I sadly had a short stream, but I promise you, chat. Yes, I'm saying chat, and I'm going to embrace it right now. It's worth it because the YouTube video is more educational. There's no chat to respond to. So I'm giving it my all in informative education while also playing in higher elo. Which honestly, I think is a better trade off. Not something I'm going to do often, I just wanted to get that one game in. And after this I have to do a shit ton of homework, so... Unlucky anyways. <laughs> so, Jax is behind. Let's not worry about that. If you're at this stage in the game, you're chilling. You're snowballing. But another problem GPs have, they win lane. What the hell do I do out of lane? 
Answer that, expand your influence around the map. How do you do that? Use your barrels, use your TP, and use your Triforce. Your Triforce is... Your Triforce basically makes you more of a global champion. It says, hey, I can do this whenever I want. I can do this, I can do this. What, I, you could, you're basically walking around smacking everyone with your hands. And you're saying, I have control over this. I was going to use another word, but I'd rather... <laughs> I'm just going to refrain from using that. So, yeah, we're just chilling right here. Life's going good. This is an ideal situation. Walk it and kill him. Not going to flash, not going to burn anything until the Elise comes. I'm telling him I want solo gold here because it's only one plate. No. My my uh, Leeson wants to spam gank him and kick him into me, but I don't think this Jax will come purely because he's so far behind. He's probably sitting at his tower right now typing to his teammates while he's inting. I wish he would try it. Ah, but you still die anyways, my friend. Sorry. Autoing my barrel there was probably not the best play because he can easily just auto it. But I knew that I could kill him either way, so I was just experimenting how quick my auto could go off. I see three bot lane, I see two dead, meaning I'm uncontested. If I'm uncontested, I can get free tower damage. I obviously won't get this, but if I can get at least damage, I'm in a decent spot. Because now next time I come here, if I kill Jax, or even if I don't kill Jax, I can just walk up here and do a bunch of damage. So, not everything, as you can see, not everything is always for the kill, not everything is always for the play. It's it's all according to a plan. And that's what I'm playing by. I'm playing by my plan right now. Oh, okay, cool glitching. I'm playing by my plan right now. I'm, I don't have nothing to TP to besides that tower. Maybe I can make a play here. Even if I don't kill, I'd rather just get the... I'd rather just get all this gold and then go back top lane and get that gold. Just funnel more stuff into myself. This Jax right now is like, please give me plates, man. I just want to get anything in this game. It's going to be nice to him. There we go. Short kiting going back and forth. Make sure I land the barrel. I really wanted the cannon there, so I let him get an extra plate just because. Why not? Level 12. Now, level 12 is a very good point for GP. You're about to get that level 13, and that level 13 is when things really go crazy out of control, but as of the moment, yeah, yeah, I know. I saw the Orion on the map. I'm gonna leave now. Actually, she's not here, meaning I can take this guy's entire topside jungle. So, I lost my other thought because I kind of just forgot. That's what happens when you press Q all day, you kind of just forget things, but regardless of that, <laughs> a good thing to do on GP is to take the enemy's jungle. Not many GPs take advantage of this. They just play lane and maybe get a barrel combo and they're like, yes, I got it, I did this. But no, they're actually not expanding their lead as far as they can. Take enemy jungle camps whenever you can. Snowball not only through yourself, oh, I shouldn't have backed yet, but through jungle as well. This is a bit of a BM ult. I actually just want my Essence Reaver right now. There we go. Because Essence Reaver gives me the extra CDR and extra damage as well. This guy's dead. This is a bad dragon to start. I can TP, but don't start. Since Swing gets poked out there, they have potential to start a dragon if they wanted to. And I would have to TP. I want to get my level 13 ASAP, so I'm willing to do anything, whatever it takes. Yes. 
There we go. That man tried to take my Gromp. That was the ultimate disrespect. I can never forgive it. I need a ward. This guy didn't have a ward for me. Oh, I overstepped. Oh, at least Shen got it. Hmm. If you wait, like... I was looking for a ward too. I kept thinking that there was a ward to TP2, but all the vision was taken everywhere. Okay, so. Mm. Nice, good kill. So let me add on now what you're supposed to do. Team is inting. I get this question a lot. Team is inting. I'm fed. What do I do? Truth is, this is where your mechanics come into play. This is where you get to show off to your friends. Okay, well. Ooh, he had a shutdown for some reason. <laughs> this is where you get to show off your GP mechanics. This is where you play with mechanics and brain. I kill Jax, I want this bot tower. I get this bot tower, I get my team gold. I get my team gold, that's very good for all of us. Now, Ocean Soul. Ocean Soul is very important. I... I know that I have to be there for every single dragon if I want to win this game. Ocean Soul is a huge turning point for either side. That can make my me being fed mean nothing, or it could mean everything. But I'm the person who decides that. That's why being fed on GP makes you pretty much just the boss man. Even on any champion, but specifically GP, you're the boss man. You decide what happens. You decide where your barrels go, you decide everything for yourself. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, she thought I was there. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I misplayed my barrels there. I queued her instead. My Q prioritized her. I thought I queued my barrel, but I must have misclicked somewhere. I went into one part, and after one parting, I put the, placed the barrel on her, and then I auto that barrel. That is a guaranteed one shot. I didn't get the kill, but I didn't die either, so I'm fine. Next, I'm going to go for my IE. When you're fed as GP, you don't want to waste any gold that you have. You want to make every all of it count. Every single cent, every single gold piece count. So, to make it count, go crit. Don't go lethality. It's, lethality isn't good to 1v9 your games. You need that crit. Without crit, you won't be 1v9ing. You'll just be doing some damage. But not the most damage. <gasps> no. Damn, I got I got cocooned at the last second. I tried to go in Caitlyn, but she flashed. She also ended up healing. I've done better there. The Caitlyn had both sums, which was pretty unfortunate. Pretty sure you're... I think he kills him here, maybe? The Syndra, if she lands the Q. Nice. Good job. So I have my IE, which is huge for me. Level 13. The only thing it's rough to play against is the Syndra, or the Caitlyn here. Because of her range. Jax is dead, so we have priority. Like salt on a wound. I have ult up in five seconds. 
So now is barrel central. I have to set up my barrels everywhere. And I'm just gonna wait right here. I can one part that way, that way. They're gonna wanna contest. If they're if they have half a brain. Okay, Jax is in this bush right here. You should have gone for that one. It's alright though. We just gotta we gotta pick and we're out. So as you can see, this Jax is just mental boom because he died so many times in laning phase. Now we need to make a play around this Baron without getting picked. Huge. If we get this, we can go Baron. Nice. Nice. Knew the combo would land because Swain landed the root. So all that needed to happen was somebody click on him and he's pulled into the combo. Save the powerful Oriana because I know I can kill her, even through if she ults me. And we make the play. It starts off with the one part at the Raptor camp. The one part in the Raptor camp slows Jax, gets some good damage off, and that's literally what allowed me to kill him. Because he survived here with like 200 health, and the least and execute did just enough to murder him. So every barrel counts. Don't think that no barrel is not worth trying or, or doesn't matter. Every single combo counts. And if you want to 1v9 your games, and especially in Master, Challenger, Bronze, Silver, Plat, Diamond, wherever you are, you have to recognize that. You have to have the confidence to you have to have the confidence in yourself to say, This is possible, I can do it, and even if it seems unlikely, I'll pull it off. And that's what happened there. And it could be both good and bad, that mentality. But the point is that you learn from it. If you could at least learn from that, then you won't make that mistake over and over. And that's that's something huge. Okay, he autos my barrels and then MF just autos him to death. I'm completely fine with that. Now, grouping or splitting. Jax I can beat, but I might still want to group with my team. At least for the dragon, stall it out. Okay, well that guy kind of overextended. We can get a catch here though. Okay, maybe not. Yeah, he's right. But they're gonna push. I have ult. I have ult for him. I've got him though. They're TPing everywhere though. Actually, we can keep going. Play around her. I'm gonna TP here to kill this Caitlyn. Since she's become a problem for my team now. I'm gonna kite around because he can only walk to towers now. He's probably gonna walk up the lane. Either that or he's gonna walk into my Syndra. Oh, we don't kill him. That's weird. Well, I guess now we do. Maybe? I think she both flash and healed. Nice. I have enough for my PD.
Another good thing on GP is to make sure you communicate with your team. A lot of the times, your teams will actually listen to you even when you don't think they will. Especially if you're fed or you're making the right call. Sometimes, yes, they will not listen to you, but majority of the time I find, no matter what ELO I'm playing in, they always listen to something that sounds reasonable or can benefit them. So if you can find something that can benefit all of you, they're more likely to listen. Why is he lagging? Okay, he flashes. Mm, we go here, we go here, we go here, we go here, we go here. So like I said, that Ocean Dragon is a game changer. And I saw Oriana trying to push mid. She overextended, so I'm going to punish her for that. No, that's not necessary. If anything, this is worth protecting. Relax. Relax, Syndra. Huge. Alright, I'm going to back now. Dude, they have a war- Oh, shit. They're gonna stop this back, too. They're actually respecting the MF back, though. I can catch them here. We have to be careful with the flank. Jax is still alive as well. Shut down. Mm, that's not good. I think it's gone. We need this tabbies for Caitlyn and for the Jax. We shouldn't have gotten caught out there. It's whatever. This game is still very winnable. Now, last item. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of options here. I can go Leandries, which I think might be the most optimal versus their team comp. Especially since we only have one AP. Actually, she built a Maw. But it's still very good versus their team comp. Especially versus Jax. Now, Leandries is good because the damage that it does is actually doubled against movement impaired targets, right? And GP's ult impairs the target and it has insane AP damage, especially at, ra at rank 3 ult. That's the only reason why I think it's worth building 5th or 6th item. Because of the damage output it gives and because of the passive it has as well. The percent health damage is extremely good, especially on GP. It procs on his barrels and his ulti. So when they're cluttered up for things like Dragon or Baron, it's so easy to catch them off guard and kill them enemy. I might be caught out here if I push this wave. Mm. I'll just back off. Nobody's coming to contest though. Oh my god. This is not pretty. Shen ulted for that. Or he's top, maybe we can fight.
Oh, it's so good. Nice. Huge play. I can stop the Oriana. I don't think I need anybody else with me. She's Um as well. Means alone can get this inhib as well. Want to make sure I stop that. Ooh, this is a huge objective to get. It's soul. If they give it, I'm pretty sure they lose the game. They're stalling super hard. I feel like we should just go on this dragon. We chased around Jax for too long. Got it. I'm still alive though. I think I'm still alive because I got it. I'm looking for them. I'm looking for them. I'm hunting. back we have to be able to kill that Jax That guy has no way out. Okay, not bad. Now Leandries is where it pops off. Everyone, this is where everything it goes crazy. This is when I get my Leandries now. Now I'm strong. Very strong. <laughs> There's a chance they backdoor for this. But I don't think they will. We're going to have to take the 50-50. Lee Sin has kick. He's level 16. And Elise is level 14. I agree, actually. I agree with this. Okay, well, we have Ocean Dragon. We should rush this off spawn. Alright, if Swain's got that, then we can do this. Sorry I'm a little quieter now. Okay, like, I, I, I tried to make it as informative as I could in the beginning, but now this game has actually gone super spicy that I'm, I'm really excited to see how it turns out. I'm really excited to see who wins and who loses. <laughs> it's 
that's not what chasing is too quick. Now, what can I sell next? I can sell my boots, but I would have to get another item, like maybe Morello's. To sell that, I would need 770. How much is Morello's? I think it's 3k, if I'm not mistaken. And to get that 3k, I would have to be... How much does it sell for? 770, so that's 800. So I would need to be at 2200 if I want to sell it. In fact, let me just get Elixir. I'm not going to troll. I'm going to just get an Elixir of Sorcery. It's much better to get with my Leandries as well. So I'm doing 120 damage a wave, but with the Leandries burn, it's doing so much more damage than that. It's insane. Oh, good Q. He dies to burn. As long as Leeson doesn't give him an escape. Too much, man. He committed way too much for that kill. He is GA. GA is not worth that kill. Even if he did get it. I only bought the elixir, by the way, because any fight is the last one of this game. So I want to make sure, want to make sure that that last fight is spicy. Elder's up soon. I'm healing with Ocean Dragon per second. Make sure you die, Elise. There we go. I'll make sure they all die. GG. And that, my friends, although a bit difficult, is how you 1v9 as Gangplank in high elo. 17, 17 2 and 18. This game shouldn't have been that difficult, but the rest of their team we're making it very difficult. Oh! Shit, I entered. 17-3 <laughs> and 18. And for the last item, we get Morello's. You know, you gotta plug off stream. And that's how you do it, boys. <sighs> Quite an intense game, but... We did it, and whew, it really was a test of mental endurance there. 50k damage, a little less than Caitlyn, but she had range and she was fed the whole game. I had to create my own range. So how much magic damage did I do? Actually, I don't even care. His healing was pretty good. That was half my, more than half my health, more than half my damage. Magic damage, although not a lot, I never had anything to begin with. I had the injuries. I used it like twice and it was so strong. Alright, I'm out everybody. Please like the video, comment, subscribe. It was amazing, amazing game. I know I loved playing every second of it. And it was very fun. Thank you all and see you guys in the next video.